So this has been here a long time. What's interesting about this, okay, I took a, a uh, just laid a bead down here. But what do you notice? The, the cappuccino latte is down here. What, where do you, what do you notice? It spread like crazy, didn't it? It's also all over the back. So coffee, things like that. And coffee is difficult because even if it's a good stain master type carpet, it goes on hot. When something goes on hot, it goes right through any barrier. That's the problem with this. So what we will do here, we'll do the same thing. We will pre-spray. Again, this could be any pre-spray. A lot of this will probably come right up, but there will be a stain left. Agitate again. Guess I can extract it this time. Oh. removes a lot of it but we still have the stain where the where the first hit we will soak it with stain magic again and we'll just leave that we don't need the light for this but sometimes if it's a real bad stain we have to leave it overnight so we'll leave that there and we'll just kind of keep an eye and see how how that does as well Okay. Organic based stain. Coffee, mustard, remember we did mustard earlier, wine, furniture stain, urine, tea, curry, fruit, fruit juice, chocolate, ketchup. What we need is our oxidizing bleach, stain magic for these. We extract red rubber gloves with this. We don't have to rinse it out of synthetics. Some carpet dye may get removed. We do not use stain magic on night. Natural fibers is too strong. Stain magic, as well as that 40 volume peroxide, are unstable. So don't, don't store your stain magic on top of the hot water tank because heat will just speed up its degradation. We say this for so if you screw up a carpet, it's not our fault. You're supposed to always check in an inconspicuous area for color fastness before using. Well, that's absurd because are you going to do all of that and then do the spot? You just you just take your chances. Extract the spot, get it dry, equal parts of A and B, or use the dual chamber. This is the key. That mixed solution can be should be used within about five minutes. Don't ever mix it with red relief. Apply it. <clears throat> liberally. Here's some grape juice spill. We could have wine. I think I got some wine pieces over here that I don't drink, so that's what I have to use. Again. Coffee, same deal. I created some coffee earlier. Here's one where they extracted. Same magic equal parts. Allow it to dry. The stain is gone. Well, probably takes about four hours. Here's the deal about coffee. Number one, coffee goes in hot, which means it instantly penetrates all barriers. Number two, most people don't realize, black coffee is acidic. It has a pH, why do you think black coffee is bitter? It has a pH of 5.5. What do we know about dyes and other things and acid acids? They set. Why does coffee with some sugar and cream taste a little better to some people? 
because the pH is about neutral or slightly on the alkaline side. If the customer calls, just tell them to blot up as much as they can, leave a weighted, moist, white towel on the spill overnight if you can't get to that day. Because a lot of times you get a phone call, she's desperate, and you can't make it. Hopefully you can't make it right. Yes, ma'am, I have no jobs today. I'll be right now. I hope that doesn't happen to you. If it's a heavy spill with coffee, you see, I thought I brought it out earlier. There it is. The water clock. What is this? Well, work. <laughs> I, I spilled some coffee. Oh, I'm tired of this stuff anyhow. I hate doing that because it makes me have to suddenly go to the bathroom. Now, of course, I would normally have a lot better unit than that. Now, if you're watching this, you can crowd around if you want, if you've not seen this before. You notice what's happening? And listen to it when I pull it up. It was, and this is just with this little bitty extractor. And that's about as far as it's going to reach. <laughs> The whole idea with a water claw is that I am extracting, I'm not extracting the fuzzy stuff, I'm extracting the pad itself because that's where everything is. Now what should I do with that spill? Stain blotter. Now if you were using your truck mount, I would have done a better job of course because this doesn't have that much suction. I mean it's practically a toy but that's okay. Plus my hose keeps coming off. But that's, the water claw to me is one of the best things that ever, there ever was because usually, very often, it wasn't just a little coffee that got spilled in there. It's a whole bunch of stuff. And what we want is to get it out of the pad so we don't come back. My main emphasis here is what a great tool the water claw is. It's one of the best tools there is for taking care of spills. And that's usually what you're dealing with is somebody spilled something. And the problem is, again, if you're just going along, oh, that, that's, that's not bad, and you're taking your floor tool across and it disappears, it's going to come back. And if it's a huge spill, 99% of it isn't even in the fuzzy stuff. And this will pull it out of all of that. So that's what I was kind of trying to, trying to show you there. The reason I typically use Prozyme as the pre-spray, you can use any kind of pre-spray with coffee stains, is because coffee is coffee. Believe it or not, most freeze-dried coffee has a, has a dye. Freeze-dried mist in coffee looks ugly. It's a very light brown and you think, oh, it's weak stuff. So how do they make it look browner, richer, fuller with brown dye? But the other reason is you're usually tip, typically got sugar or sweetener and cream, which is what? It can be milk. Well, what, how, how, well, earlier, milk, we used Prozyme for the bacteria to work on it. But usually I would treat it pre-spray with Prozyme, agitate, leave about half an hour, suck it out like crazy. That's what I would do. Then if there's any stain left, just like this one, it's still working on it. We would normally leave it overnight. I would say about half of that stain is now gone. Okay. 
left, I can always hit it with the iron and I'd be done. This mustard is uh, about 90% done. Again, normally we would, we would be leaving that on overnight. have to speed it up, we can always use the steam iron and damp it, but that's dangerous because we might pull out the carpet dye. Before you put on stain blotter, they can blot it up. If it covers that huge area, we can use ARA. To me, stain blotter is that light powder we use on little spots. ARA is what we use if it's just massive. It's just a dining room and they've just got spills everywhere. That's 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 the big difference. The other prop, the other thing is if it's an area where they're just walking all the time, you put down stain blotter, everybody's walking all over it. Then I'll use ARA instead of stain blotter. There's hot espresso tea. piece of carpet that's been uh, where I spilled a bunch of hot coffee containing sugar and cream on it. And again, step one, as always, is to extraction rinse with your upholstery tool, or in this case, I'm using the Tempo. 
And as you can see, I'm removing, oh, maybe half of it. But I'm still going to have a stain and the backing is definitely still going to be there. If it's extremely heavy, again, I could use my water claw. Here I'm going to use my Stain Magic in the Dual Chamber Sprayer Kit. Let me just show you a little bit of how this works. In this case, I'm going to fill it up. I'm emptying out my bottle that's labeled Part A, checking to make sure I'm going to pour it into the empty bottle that's labeled Solution A. I'm going to fill that up. And I'm going to do the same thing with the Solution B, filling up my Solution B that comes with the dual chamber kit. You need to be sure to wear rubber gloves so you don't get this on yourself. It will definitely burn your skin. Then I'll insert my sprayer, making sure that the tube that's labeled Part A goes into the bottle that's labeled Part A. And then it has a locking mechanism that I lock it in place and I'm all set to go. Here I'm saturating the carpet piece with the stain magic. Because of the dual chamber, it's automatically mixing parts A and B equally. And I'm going to spray it until it's absolutely saturated and I know for sure it's down into the backing. And as you can see here, I'm showing you the backing now, and as you can see, even in a few minutes, it's already bleached out not only the front surface, but also in the backing itself, which is my major concern. Use the temple to pull out most of it, but uh, of course, some is left on the surface, and I know most of it's down in the backing. There's no question about it. Here I'm literally pouring a bucket of water, just plain water on the area. And I'm using my water claw to pull that out. Once I, once I, because it has a clear plate, I can see when it's through. I will use those little red levers to release the vacuum so I can move it. You just keep doing that until you've got it as dry as possible. That'll flush it all out. All I really need to do is apply my stain blotters I'm doing here because there is going to be a wicking problem. I want to cover the area very well. Every place that it's wet, I'm working it in well with the whiz groom. I want it to work as a poultice to absorb it all. And normally the next day we vacuum it up. next day, but as you can see, the stain's all gone, and I can tell you this was two months ago, and that stain never came back. So I, that's the best way of approaching a big spill like that. 